Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I'm back with another Dying Light 2 video. Now you guys know in the recent dev update video, Techland told the community to ask them any questions and we asked them a lot of questions and Techland have answered to majority of them. So in this video, we're going to talk about a few things. Starting C Engine, total game length, PS5 and Xbox Series X with 4K 60fps support, old and next gen support, reasons behind the delay and much much more. Let's look at the first question. What are the main technical improvements of the C engine over Dying Light's Chrome Engine 6? Now for people who don't know, C engine is the latest engine Techland have created and Dying Light 2 is being developed on C engine. The rendering director says from my perspective, it is support for the new generation of consoles and new technologies like ray tracing. Also worth mentioning are the very extensive AI system compared to Chrome Engine 6 and many other game systems. Everything is held together by the new component based welding system. We also have a new game world editor. C Engine makes even better use of multi-core processors. The senior technology programmer says, we have upgraded almost every core system of the engine. The new game component system allows us to pack a magnitude of objects into the levels. The wall streaming technology lets player explore a vast city without loading screens. We have upgraded our physics engine to the bullet physics feature in some of the most popular open world blockbusters. The brand new animation and the facial expression system allow us to present lifelike characters thanks to the new artificial intelligence system. The audio system has been upgraded to WIs, which led to more immersed sound design and support for the interactive music. The new story system allows for branching narratives and large scale changes in the world the player can shape through their choices. The next question is important. How many infected can be displayed at once in Dying Light 2? Will there be veritable hordes like Days Gone for example? The game engine director says we have a different opponent design than in Days Gone. Our AI has more diverse and complex behaviors and their distribution is also different. Thanks to the new crowd system, we can display more infected than in Dying Light 1. And by using a more extensive LOD system, we have also increased the number of simulated AI. That sounds really good. We're going to see a lot of hordes in Dying Light 2. So that's a good news. Next question. A recent report mentioned that C Engine's complexity of use was partly to blame for the game's delay. Can you comment on this? Lucas says the transition to C Engine overlapped with the pre-production stage of Dying Light 2. These changes were unavoidable in order to create the detailed world of Dying Light 2. Our developers needed time to adapt to the technology and our engine department needed time to improve the user experience of the new editor. The early stage of C Engine deployment was a difficult period for our production but it was necessary to fulfill the ambitions of Dying Light 2. Next question. Dying Light 2 map was said to be four times bigger than that of the original game. Is that still true? Has there been any downsizing at all from the technical standpoint? Lucas says C Engine does a great job supporting large scale open worlds. Thanks to the world streaming technology, it's not a technology that limits the map size. Tools such as City Builder allow us to quickly cover huge areas with realistic urban environment that can be rendered efficiently in the game. What actually limits the map size is the time needed to fill the city with unique gameplay challenges, memorable stories and interesting exploration possibilities. There was no downsizing due to technical reasons. The estimate that the map in Dying Light 2 is four times bigger than that of the original game is the most precise estimate that we can provide. The map of Dying Light 2 is much more vertical and gives us more exploration opportunities so the city feels even bigger. The next question, how did the city builder tool help you craft the city? Did it enable you to create a more varied environment than we are used to in the open world games? Lucas says the main reason we invested in creating city builder was giving C engines user a tool to efficiently build large scale urban environments. City Builder implements a top-down approach to crafting the game world. The user can draw a city plan just like an urban architect would. There's no longer a need to place every wall manually on the map. City Builder automates the tedious, repeatable parts of the map, building progress and lets level artist and level designer focus on more creative parts. It also boosts iterations time changes to visual styles and geometry of buildings can be easily propagated across the city. Users retain full control over the look and feel of the city and they can invest their time into crafting memorable unique locations and also gameplay opportunities while City Builder takes care of the rest. This way we can craft a more detailed, varied and unique environment in a regular production studio. Next question. You previously confirmed the ray tracing and NVIDIA DLSS for the PC version of Dying Light 2. Which effects will be ray traced specifically? Do you plan to use other DirectX 12 Ultimate features like VRS, Mesh Shaders, Sampler Feedback in Dying Light 2? 
Thomas says all the effects mention shadows AO and light reflections. Example from the player's flashlight, we also experimenting with NVIDIA to expand the effects base. Ray tracing is a great technology, we are exploring new possibilities related to DirectX 12 Ultimate. Mesh shaders are rather a matter for the next project. Dying Light 2 will continue to be developed for a long time, so the results of our research will also be visible after the game's release if they significantly affect the game quality. The first Dying Light was originally scheduled to hit PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 before you decided to make it next gen only. Will this be the case? for Dying Light 2 as well or are you keeping the PS4 and Xbox One versions this time as well? If so, can you assure fans that you tested the game extensively on the old consoles? Thomas says the main console have long been our priority. We make every effort to ensure the game quality on PS4 and Xbox One is at the highest level. We started testing on the older generation consoles much much earlier in the other projects. This was related to the scale of changes to the engine and ambitions plans to create an even larger and more complex game than Dying Light 1. Next question. What do you think of capabilities of Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, having worked on them for a while? Thomas says, the new consoles are great equipment. A lot of progress have been made in the area of CPU performance and I.O. bandwidth. The new capabilities and GPU speed are also impressive. I think like any new generation, it takes a while before we learn to get the most of the hardware. Next question. Will Dying Light 2 feature a 60fps or performance mode option on Xbox Series X and PS5? Also, will there be a mode that supports ray tracing on these next-gen consoles? Thomas says yes. We plan to allow you to choose quality, including ray tracing, performance 60fps and 4K as we are working hard on performance. I cannot provide more details at this point. We try to cram as much as possible onto the next gens. Next and the most important question. When will we see some new Dying Light 2 gameplay? Is the release really coming soon as mentioned on the Steam page? Demand says, we plan to restart our communications very very soon, but some gameplay has already been released. We have shared a small snippet of the gameplay with the community already in honor of their interest and devotion. We understand the player wants to learn more about Dying Light 2 is the number one game on the Steam wish list after all. But we really needed time to make sure we wouldn't start talking about the game too early. Let me assure you that we also felt the community's pressure very strongly. So I hope it will be easier for everyone. So guys, I want to end the video here. There are still more questions left and I'm going to cover all of them in the next separate video. So guys, this video was sponsored by Dragon City. Also, the special link to download the game will be in the description. So without wasting any time, download this game and redeem your special gifts. Trust me, you'll love it. Thank you for watching. Good night and good luck.